Next, on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show, here's Brian O'Neill. And here he is, Dr. Robert E. Heinemann, political science professor emeritus. Well, thank you, Brian. Let's start out with uh, Bernie and Biden. Now, uh, some Democrats want uh, Bernie out of the race. Bernie's not too happy about that. Give us the latest on the breakdown there. Well, uh, the latest is that uh, uh, Biden at this point has about 1,180 delegates. He needs 1,990-some uh, to get a majority, and uh, Bernie is uh, pumping along there with about 885. So the last uh, primary on uh, Tuesday, uh, even though, you, again, you get the pundits saying Biden swept, et cetera, um, Bernie still picked up delegates. And uh, although he got pounded pretty badly in Florida, where Biden uh, picked up, I don't know, 40 or 50 more better delegates than Bernie did, and again, in the southern states, uh, Biden is uh, pounding him uh, pretty badly. Again, I think largely because of the large African American um, part of the population. But again, the idea that the Democrats are going to carry those southern states, I think, are you know that's a mis, uh, that's an illusion. But uh, in uh, Arizona, Bernie finished within about ten point uh, ten percentage points of. Biden, and in fact, in terms of delegates, I think uh, Biden got maybe nine or ten more delegates than Bernie did. So he picked up delegates again, and uh, the point is, I think, if he stays in, he's he's going to continue to pick up delegates. Now, whether he'll pick up enough fast enough to prevent uh, Biden from getting uh, 1,990, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren is still sitting on top, I think, about 60, so... There's still some room there, but uh, I, I see Tulsi Gabbard has thrown her two delegates to uh, Biden, so uh, she's <laughs> she's pulled out of the race. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, what Bernie's interested in is insisting that his views and his supporters' views move the Democrat Party further to the left. And uh, I don't think he's going to be satisfied with promises uh, from Biden and the uh, Democrat leadership, because he knows where the, uh, they all stand. So I think he, he may well be willing to go into the convention, even though by that time uh, Biden has, uh, say, uh, 2,000 delegates. Uh, Bernie uh, can still come in, get his name brought up on the floor and make a speech and uh, rouse his uh, supporters. And I don't think Biden wants that. And I don't think the Democrat leadership wants that. So they really want to get Bernie out of there uh, before the convention comes around. And I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. Dr. Bob, uh, New York Times is calling on uh, Bernie to step aside and join up uh, with uh, Joe Biden. Um, Elizabeth Warren is kind of hedging. She says, you know, Bernie needs some space right now to assess things. I think the Washington Post... Uh, um, is kind of chiding uh, Bernie Sanders, saying they have an article called Bernie Sanders has some nerve. Uh, how much influence would the Post and the Times have on the Bernie Sanders campaign, do you think, Doc? Uh, not much, but I do think what they're going to try to do here is bring up this virus pandemic and say, you know, at this time we've got to be all united, we have to work together, sort of give that line out there to try to get Bernie uh, to step aside. And I think that's the kind of pressure he's getting. And frankly, he's getting pretty irritated about the whole thing. So um, we'll just have to see. Now, if they keep uh, uh, canceling primaries and putting them off, uh, that does give Biden an advantage, I think. It makes it very tough for Bernie to get out there and campaign and build up support among the, the young people and get some big... Uh, crowds and things of that sort. So that does put him at a disadvantage. Uh, we'll just have to see how this plays out. Now, Governor Andrew Cuomo was uh, pleased uh, beginning either Tuesday or Wednesday of this week with President Donald Trump and has been uh, singing Trump's praises uh, to a certain degree. Governor Cuomo has. Uh, not so Joe Biden. Uh, Joe Biden says we need more ventilators, protective equipment, critical supplies. We need action not words. Uh, 
your thoughts there, Dr. Heineman, on this uh, change between uh, uh, this change for Governor Andrew Cuomo, and, and would that possibly affect uh, his chances of being picked uh, as a vice presidential candidate? Well, my understanding is Biden has already pledged to pick a woman, um, but that doesn't mean he'll necessarily keep that pledge. But I do think uh, in Biden's case, you get uh, talk about words. I mean, here's a guy who has for, what was he, in the Senate for 36 years, uh, vice president for eight years, and he's very adept at uh, talking about helping the poor, the disadvantaged, et cetera, and how much help has he actually given any of them. Uh, so he's in a position now where he can say, well, we've got to have more, we've got to have more, you're not acting fast. And that, that's really pretty cheap, frankly, that's because I think uh, both Cuomo and uh, uh, Trump are working as hard as they can to uh, get this under control. And I think, frankly, they're having some success at this point. So, um, in any case, I think that's, frankly, pretty cheap. Dr. Robert E. Heineman, on the COVID-19 coronavirus, what are the effects of this long-term effects? Well, I think, it's, uh, yeah, and instead of spending our time uh, looking at uh, shortages and uh, coming up with some possible uh, uh, cures and things of that sort, uh, it makes some sense uh, to take a look at the long-term effects of what's going on right now. And I'm not certain, uh, you know, that's going to be uh, particularly constructive. Although, again, they're doing what they have to do right now. But, uh, and number one, you've got the power to declare emergencies, not only in, uh, at the national level, but in New York State and governors all over the country are declaring uh, uh, emergencies. And apparently they feel this allows them to do all kinds of things that you clearly couldn't do uh, without such a declaration. And the problem is that really sets a, a precedent I think, uh, for future situations, so that if you get, uh, say, uh, Mayor Bloomberg's concern about large uh, uh, cups of uh, soda pop and uh, declare a national emergency, I'm pushing that a little bit, of course. But the fact is, what constitutes a national emergency and what doesn't? And uh, it might make some sense to have some checks on the president's and, and governor's ability to do that. For example, I was talking to someone yet, uh, Thursday uh, that uh, uh, was talking to some of the people from uh, Albany, and one of the fellows from Albany suggested that the governor of California may well end up uh, declaring martial law in California. Now, I'm not quite sure why you would do that, except that uh, California, of course, has... Uh, all these people laying out on the streets and in tents and uh, all over the place there. And I can see where the, that's a real serious, serious threat And when you got a virus like this spreading. Uh, but so far, California, in terms of deaths and such, is not, uh, it's not as high as uh, Washington or uh, uh, New York State. But nonetheless, the potential is there. And uh, this guy that's governor of California now, I can see him trying to pull something like that off. And uh, what's interesting in New York State has been that uh, the other day, earlier in the week, uh, Mayor de Blasio was saying that uh, he may have to put a lockdown on New York City and uh, insist that people not leave their homes, et cetera, shelter in place or whatever they call it. And within, uh, within an hour, I think, Cuomo came out and made a very clear statement. I saw that. That that was not going to happen. That is not going to happen in New York State that we're going to lock down any cities. He really snapped uh, de Blasio pretty heavily. If I could stop you on a political science question there, whose who's word is more important, the governor or the mayor? The governor. Okay. Uh, New York City is a creature of New York State. All the okay. cities and villages and such are controlled by the state. So uh, the mayor, uh, although he uh, has considerable political clout in some ways, uh, what the governor says goes. Um, so in any case, uh, the point is uh, you've got these precedents set here, and, of course, tied into that is, of course, uh, President Trump 
its broad use of executive power and uh, acting in you know in a broad fashion there again. And again, you know that builds up uh, this whole idea of the the power of the presidency. So I think those are some effects that set precedents. We've got to be very careful about uh, in future uh, situations or crises of one sort or another. Although it is interesting, you compare the United States' response to that of China, which is a top-down, centralized, uh, authoritarian uh, dictatorship, really, uh, and the problems uh, that they had getting uh, this under control. And then you look at the United States, where you've got the president, and then you've got all these governors running around, and then you've got a few mayors running around, and everybody, right. uh, generally speaking... Everybody is working together. It's bottom up, and uh, everybody uh, seems to see that, uh, that you know we got to act and we got to work together. So they're getting a tremendous amount of cooperation, I think, from people around the country because they see this is this is something that has to be done. And I think uh, it does allow uh, people to come up with new ideas and different approaches to things, which some of which may be very constructive. Um, and I think basically that's the difference uh, between us and uh, dictatorships, frankly. If I could ask you a quick uh, question, Dr. Bob, about uh, Rochester, New York. Yes, I'm familiar with the city, yes. <laughs> In Monroe County. Yes. <laughs> uh, he goes there quite a bit, and he knows that I know that. Um, from Bob Lonsberry, and Lonsberry uh, is not uninfluential in uh, Rochester political situations. Uh, he's unseated more than one uh, Rochester area official. And I'm wondering, is he putting pressure on the governor that the governor would be concerned about in terms of Rochester votes because of Lonsbury's pressure? I don't get the chance to catch Lonsbury's radio show. I'm on the air at the same time, but I do uh, see on Lonsbury.com uh, an article that says, by the governor's decree, waitresses as a category have been pushed into unemployment by a state government that can't even cannot even make its unemployment website work. And that ticks people off, Lonsbury says. Dr. Bob, would Cuomo have uh, any fear of the Bob Lonsbury show in terms of uh, Cuomo caving to any pressure from Lonsbury? Your thoughts? No. No, I don't think so at all. Well, Lonsbury, he's in Monroe County, and Cuomo has to deal with uh, Westchester, uh, Manhattan, and uh, a very large population area, which sees a huge influx of uh, travelers uh, every day, every hour. Uh, plus, you've got the huge population there, and Cuomo has to take actions, I think, that... Uh, uh, meet uh, the threats in that area, and I think he's very concerned that this thing doesn't uh, exponentially blow out of uh, uh, control to the point where the health care system is, you know, overwhelmed. Now, the point is, upstate, which is where Lonsbury is, uh, the situation is quite a bit different, and you don't have that kind of population concentration and uh, the kind of population movement. So I guess you can sit back and throw stones at the governor in that respect, but you can see what Cuomo's trying to do. On the other hand, it's important that Cuomo realize that the upstate situation is uh, different, and some of these uh, executive orders and things that he's coming up with uh, should be tailored to provide some flexibility uh, for the upstate area, which I think is what uh, Congressman Reed was saying just the other day as well. Uh, so you got to have that. But again, you know, take a look at what Reed had to say. It was very clear that he supported what the governor was trying to do. The important thing to do is recognize some of the differences here in the state. Uh, Dr. Bob, Governor Andrew Cuomo, interestingly, uh, put out a statement. I think it was Monday. And what Governor Cuomo said was, I realize that a lot of people are not happy with uh, all these school closings and shutting down this and that venue. And the governor said, don't be mad at the school board officials or the mayors or the town supervisors. If you're going to get mad at anybody, uh, be mad at me, the governor. That's what the governor said. The buck stops here, Cuomo said. Right, yeah, because he's got to do these things. And uh, 
that, uh, I mean, he just has to do it. That uh, The whole idea of looking at what other countries have done, you look at uh, China, first of all, China um, tried to ignore the problem, tried to hide the problem, and then finally had to admit they had a big problem. And by that time, they were way late in getting, trying to get the thing under control. But in Taiwan and Japan and South Korea, they got right on it right away. And uh, they've been very fortunate in uh, keeping the thing under, under control. Uh, and that's what Cuomo's trying to do, too, try to get on it right away, try to uh, do everything he can to keep it contained. And um, so, you know, we have to got to give him credit for that. And then the same for uh, Trump and the, the White House. They're, they're moving along. And, uh, you know, Trump at the very beginning shut off immigration from uh, uh, China, and then he traveled from China. Now he's shutting off other uh, travel from other countries to try to uh, protect uh, the citizens of the United States. It is kind of interesting, and this is one of the other long-term effects of all this, I think, is that this is in terms of being dependent upon China for uh, medical supplies and for a lot of other things. I think uh, the United States and uh, companies in this country are going to be encouraged to look more and more toward production and uh, focusing their efforts in this country as opposed to uh, China, which uh, obviously uh, has not acted uh, as quickly as they could. Now, apparently the Chinese medical profession is doing everything they can. You certainly got to give them credit there. But uh, Xi Jinping now is uh, going out of his way to try to claim that somehow China has uh, shown how effective they can be when, in fact, uh, the, all the facts show that how ineffective they were. So you're going to get, uh, I think you're going to get uh, a real uh, kind of blowback here from the United States and um, government uh, institutions. Dr. Heidman, I wanted to stop you there and ask you, what do you make of uh, some in the liberal media referring to the virus as the Trump virus? And what do you make of President Trump uh, continuously, uh, continually uh, calling the uh, COVID-19 the Chinese virus? What do you make of these two situations? Yeah, well, that's the kind of garbage you get out of the press uh, in a situation. Instead of getting concerned about trying to get people to work together, they want to make it out as some sort of politically correct uh, boo-boo on the part of the president. I mean, uh, again, uh, I think people see past that. But, again, you, you know, these guys, I guess, they got a right to sit back and uh, fire, uh, throw stones and things. And uh, I mean, it's 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 totally absurd. But uh, because it is a Chinese virus, that's where it, that's clearly where it came from. Um, so at any rate, I think that's one of the longer term effects there that uh, we can uh, affect. And uh, Trump's whole approach of uh, America and America great again and pushing industry back into this country, I think uh, people can see where that has a, that has a real advantage now. But uh, also, uh, in other areas, for example, the economy now, we're pouring uh, huge, huge amounts of money uh, into the economy. And uh, you know, people are concerned we're headed for another depression, which we might be, I don't know. But obviously, um, the amounts of money that uh, Congress and the president are willing to put in here. Again, I don't know. That's uh, that's a kind of precedent you got to kind of wonder about. But on the other hand, uh, these people are out of work. Uh, they need help, and um, so we got to do what we can. And and again, on the other hand, we are the richest country the world has ever seen. We got the money, uh, and. Uh, so uh, my view has always been that's kind of why you have money, is to deal with situations in your life or in the country to uh, uh, survive and make life uh, sustainable. So, uh, but it is pretty dramatic, that's for sure. Dr. Heidemann, reading the headlines, uh, U.S. considers intervention in Saudi-Russia oil standoff. That's from the Wall Street Journal. From the, the Business Insider, and these are all Thursday afternoon, oil surges 
a record 24% after Trump says he'll get involved in the global price war. From the Hill.com, Trump administration prepares to buy 30 million barrels of oil amid industry slump. What do you make of this? Well, uh, I don't know why we're getting involved in that. I, I think I'd let the Russians and the Saudis fight it out. But I think the problem with that is that the Saudis can't hold up. And the last I saw, and again, uh, that was yesterday, I think the price of oil was at something like $26 a barrel. Uh, and uh, what I've seen indicates that the Saudis can't hang in there. It's got to be at least 50 or $60 a barrel for the Saudis to... Uh, be able to uh, hang in there for more than a year or two, whereas the Russians can pour it out. And so uh, it may be that uh, Trump's trying to give the Saudis uh, some help there, although, frankly, I just assume he didn't. But uh, as you know, they're talking about moving the price of gas down to a dollar a gallon now on the on the pump. Um, and, um, again, uh, it's kind of hard to be... Uh, dissatisfied with that. But no, I think uh, that's probably what uh, Trump wants to do. And uh, again, I guess in terms of uh, getting involved, uh, I guess we've got to find some place to sell our oil. So uh, uh, that may be another factor there. But uh, yeah, we'll have to watch that because uh, the, if the price of oil drops that low and uh, Saudis fold, and again, we got another big uh, economic issue on the <laughs> on the horizon. With that, Doctor Bob, we have to leave it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Are we done here? Or yeah. You Thanks need, so uh, much for joining us, Doc. Quite all right.